We've got a whole host of sports women and people in South Africa, okay, from ballerinas, and we've got a father sitting right here in the front, front row, very, very proud, to rugby players, runners, okay, swimmers. And this guy here is from Cape Town, Ryan Sands. Okay, he's using, have you all heard of Ryan Sands? I'm sure you have here in Cape Town. He's using GNLD products. Why is Ryan using GNLD products? He's worried about the long-term effects that the running that it's going to have on his body. Now realize that this guy is running races in excess of 250 kilometers. In fact, this race, this one here that you see him here on the screen, he's running, it's the, I think it's called the Leaderville Challenge. It's a 100-mile race in, I think, the Colorado Mountains. Okay, in America. He ran it last year. He won it on his first attempt. He's setting all kinds of records. Um, and he's presently in the Drakensberg in, in the Tell, running across, across the Drakensberg. He does crazy things. Okay? But he's using a product because he's worried about where he's going to be in 20 years' time, 30 years' time. Okay? So the lifestyle aspect of, of GNLD. Darian Townsend, Olympic gold medalist. Okay? Part of the 4x100 meter team that won the, the, the gold medal, I think it was a 2004, okay, with Reich, uh, uh, Reich Mierthling, Skuman, okay, Lyndon Ferns, and, uh, and Darian Townsend. He's gone to three Olympics, okay, and he had some achievement just in itself, okay. He didn't do two, he didn't really feature in the last one, he, he swam in a couple of events, but it's unbelievable the form he's hit now after the Olympics. Um, you'll see him, he's been in the newspapers, I actually... Yeah, coming up yesterday, I was very, very proud. I get the newspaper, and there's Darian featuring on the back page because he just won four, four medals, two golds at the Berlin uh, FINA World Cup over the weekend. He's re so he is doing, doing very, very well. Been using GNLD products since about 2008. Okay? Our rugby players. We've got a whole host of rugby players that are using the product. Some of them to the advantage on Saturday. It's going to make a real difference to them. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for you, Western province. <laughs> okay, but I'm neutral and I'm, uh, I'm an unbiased commentator. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> now, I want to get someone up here. Okay, He's a great friend of mine. I had the privilege of, of, of uh, playing rugby with him. Um, he's got, had incredible longevity as a sports person. Um, I think he <coughs> must be some sort, of, some sort of record, but he's played rugby professionally literally for 19 years. Work that out. Okay? He's got an incredible record as far as um, his try scoring ratio when he played tests. I mean, he averaged literally a try, uh, two tries a test, or he can tell us the ratio, but I mean, he's one of the highest there is. Okay? He's played in Europe, he's played in South Africa. He's our very own Stefan Zablon. Stefan, please come forward. <laughs> Microphone. The last time I did this, I gave it to him and it broke straight away. He blamed that on being on me being a rugby player, but he's also one. Stefan, can you? Um, well, first of all, how are you doing? Glad, glad to have you. Glad to see you. You've also put a blue shirt on. Um, I don't know. I don't really know what that means, but can that's, you just? That just... is what happens when you leave a forward to get the dress code for the night. Why don't tell me? Don't worry, I've got a shirt for you. I'll bring it to Cape Town. <laughs> See, I'm looking after you all here. He puts me in a, a blue and white shirt, so I wasn't very happy. <laughs> I almost arrived with no shirt on, but one of those. Well, when you look at some of these photos, I think some of the ladies might have been quite happy about this. <laughs> um, Stefan, can you. Can, uh, let, me, let me just take that off before we distract some of the ladies. Because um, I can't focus on what you have to say. Stefan, can you just introduce yourself? Uh, tell us where you're from. A little bit about your background. Hi, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Stefan de Blanche, and uh, I'm currently living in Durban, KwaZulu Natal. But funny enough, I grew up about two hours from here in a small old town called Swallendam. I still have very fond memories of the Western Cape, and uh, I come back here often just to recharge my batteries. So, yes, I'm living in Durban. Uh, played a bit of rugby as Warren uh, might have mentioned earlier in the night. And uh, yeah, now I'm. Now I've got a boss, now I have to work, I've retired now from rugby. I'm still trying to keep fit, trying different things that I never had the opportunity to do while playing rugby, like cycling at 100 miles an hour down a, down a mountain on a mountain bike or, or racing in the off-road car. You're allowed to do those things now. 
Well, yeah, if your wife allows you to do it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, why do you play rugby? People forget that uh, even in your contract, things state that you're not allowed to take part in skydiving, bungee jumping, you know, all Jeez. sorts of extreme sports. Uh, rugby is extreme enough as it is, but uh, it's, it's great to do some other things. I'm, uh, I'm CEO, and it sounds very posh, but of the South African rugby legends. Uh, basically, we do two things. We develop young rugby players to make sure there's a constant stream of good rugby players coming through the systems in South Africa. And also to look after guys, after rugby. Um, people always think that rugby is glamorous and you earn a lot of money. And quite often you, you do earn a good salary, but you only have a short period of time to do so. Injuries can put an abrupt end to, to your career and to your dreams. And often after rugby players stop playing, financially they're also in difficulty. Yeah, I think, I mean, Stefan, I'd like to, I mean, you've, you've been an inspiration to, to many. You talk about a short career, but Stefan's had 19 years at the top level. Um, as a teenager, when you were a youngster in Swellendam, what were your dreams? What, are you, what, are you, what were your dreams? What did you want to achieve? Yeah, it's, it's funny. I, I sort of just lived every, every single day for, I didn't really have, a, had goals that I set out like you, you know, I, I want to play for the Springboks, even though it was always in the back of your head. You played so many test matches in the back of your of your garden against your best mates and De Blanche always had the last kick off the game with two minutes to go. <laughs> uh, Springboks three, the All Blacks three and uh, you know, if I got it the game was over, if I didn't I always had two minutes to go back and to go and get the kick so uh, we never lost a test in the backyard, I can promise you that much but uh, they always had that dream, you know, one day you dream about singing the national anthem standing there with 50,000 people in the crowd and you know, and one day that came true. Yeah, it's a goosebump moment. I get it just here when Stefan starts to talk about it. Um, Stefan, you've had incredible longevity. I'm going to put a sign on here. It's, uh, there's a picture here of Stefan when he made his debut for the Springboks, 1998. 1998, youngster, fresh-faced. He, he debuted uh, at provincial level in 1994 for, for Bullen, just around the corner. Um, he then came up to the Sharks and joined us, I think, was it 98? In 98, made his debut. And there's a picture here also when Stefan finished this year. And I think it's, I mean, it's a great honor to, to have played in your, all the, the, the competitions in the Southern Hemisphere as far as super, super rugby finals and Curry Cup finals. But he also finished off playing in the Heineken Cup final for Ulster this year. And that was uh, 2012, 19, 19 odd years. Did you always see age just as a number? Because, I mean, it's incredible uh, that you achieve this kind of longevity in your career. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> creeps up on you, it happened so quickly, I still remember, and there's a guy that I used, a guy called Wayne Five, he used to play for the Sharks, and uh, and we were in, in Christchurch, funnily enough, brother, you were also in the room that afternoon, and I was uh, talking about rugby, we were in the fissure room getting treatment, as rugby players always have bumps and bruises that they have to deal with, and uh, Warren, didn't you study chiropractor? Yeah, uh, Warren was trying to manipulate some guy's back, and you know, you hurt him and put him out for a few months after that. Warren <laughs> <laughs> always thought he knew what to do to him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, we were in a physio room, I think it was Dave Becker was a physio at the time, and, and when five we walked into the room, and it was my second season with the Sharks, and we started talking about age, and Warren uh, Wayne asked me, he said, Stefan, how old are you? I said, I'm 23, and he said, yeah, hey, you're such a young pup still. <laughs> you know, before you knew it, I was 37 years old, and it, it's gone like that. So yes, at one stage, you know, I always thought, you know, you reach 30, you're over the hill, and, you, and you're done, and then you reach it before you know it, and then age just becomes a number. It doesn't really matter, because people always say, and I've told you before, people always used to tell me that, you, you know, you're really, you're really playing good rugby for a 32 or a 34-year-old, and I said, you know what, that's not really a compliment, because... We don't play in an age league or an age department. I have to compete against a guy that's 20 or 19 years old. If you tell me that I'm playing well, then that's a compliment. But don't tell me I'm playing well for a 35-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> that's not really a compliment, I promise you. Well, you played you play, you play some of your best rugby, especially when you came back from Wales, playing for the Sharks in that pullback jersey. Stephen, when I, when I joined June Aldi in 2008, you, and I phoned you, you didn't hesitate, and I spoke about GNRB, you didn't hesitate uh, to start using the product. Why? Well, first of all, you know, I wouldn't say I knew the product well at that stage, but uh, I think first of all it goes on, it goes on credibility and 
and Warren had credibility with me. I always, uh, you know, without saying anything, you know, just the way he conducted himself on off the field, I could say, <laughs> I could say, I could say straight yes, straight away I could say yes, just because I, I trusted Warren. That's first of all, and then second of all, I did some research on the product, etc., etc., as you would do, because you know we get tested all the time, and you don't want to jeopardize, you know. Don't want to jeopardize your career because you've taken some banned substances. And Warren spoke about a guy like Lance Armstrong now getting caught after many, many years. So, but yeah, straight away, also, first of all, Warren said that, that they're good to go. And also, then I said, well, you know, I, I need some proof. And uh, I think that proof was up there earlier, the letter from, from the vice president of America. Or the, uh, the head of the, the scientific advisory board, John Miller. Right, that's and that's and that's that was the only company in the world who could give me a who could give me a guarantee that their products are clean. I lived in the UK and there you buy your products over the counter. If you buy your products over the counter in the UK, you have a, a twenty percent chance one in five guys will get tested positive from uh, from from well known products that you buy over the counter. Well respected and and, and big and strong companies. But I think, it, I think it really is the, the GNLD difference that we can offer to sports people that all our distributors talk about, talk about it all the so, time. And then just, yeah, I mean, we get tested all the time. Every single, every single game, they draw two names out of a hat. Um, it's amazing. When it's your time, it's your time. Sometimes you get tested five times in a row. I don't know how they manage to draw. <laughs> I think Bis Bismarck, I mean, Bismarck was tested yeah, five, five times, times last year in Super Rugby. And I, I remember when I got tested, I, it's... It's tough, though, because you play the game and now you've got to produce, uh, you've got to produce the goods and you're a bit dehydrated and you've got all the, all the, 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 the showers running and the water running. I remember being in, when we beat the Waratahs in that terrible season in 2000, but we beat them. And everyone's waiting for, the, for me on the bus, but I can't get my you know, urination happening because I'm, I'm dehydrated. But it's something that we, we, left, we left Warren at the stadium and all went back to the hotel to, to celebrate as was the only winner of the season. So we had to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> good one. But it's amazing how things have changed. Someone asked me, do they actually watch you? And in the, well, I say in the old days, but when I started playing, you know, they would get into the they would get into the change room after the game, give you the papers and say you've been selected to do to pass your urine sample and they will sort of leave you, let you shower and then you go to the bathroom and do your thing and bring out a sample. Nowadays they actually they stand there, they watch you shower, they watch you get dressed, they watch everything and then to make matters worse, I mean it's not a problem for me, but for now they actually go into the bathroom with you and they watch you actually urinate. Don't you when you stand there, it's not like you have stage fright. Uh, it's been a pleasure having Stefan to go. to control and really, uh, really watch out for things like that nowadays. Stefan, I mean, you're an example when, when, I, was, when I was playing rugby and uh, you carried on many years afterwards, but you're an example to all of us and the emphasis that you played on nutrition. Why did you think nutrition was so important? Yeah, people often think that, uh, you know, you can take suppl supplements and, and GNLD is a very good product, but I mean, I've told Warren before this also, I told the last time, nothing can replace a good meal and what you put in your body through, through food. I mean, that is, that is so, so important. And uh, I would say nutrition is 80% of, of, of preparation. Uh, when I was younger, I always thought that if I train really hard and eat nothing, I'll have a good body. And, and what a mistake. You know, I've trained really hard. And, uh, you know, you get to know your body later on. You know that it's, that's the biggest problem and the biggest mistake you can make. And then you sort of, you know, you learn, you learn, you learn along the way you get to know your body and you and you find that balance between training eating resting sleeping you know all the important all the important facets of of of, of rugby and of, of of sport now i know you you were in uh, in ulster and you you quite stephen's quite active on social media the twittering and the tweeting and the whatever you call it <laughs> chattering and twittering and all that. i'm trying to get i'm trying to get i'm trying to get with it um, but I mean, you, you tweeted once here about fighter defense. Now, what were some of the f favorite products that you used, and uh, what is the benefit that you got out of it? I think rugby players are very spoiled, and uh, they're always trying to find a shortcut uh, in doing all things because a lot of things get done for them in life, like driver's license, etc. etc. <laughs> Stand and accuse someone. Someone will do it. Someone will do it. Uh, 
But uh, I just think that fight to defense and, and uh, you know, even the daily vitality back is such a such a good way, especially for a sportsman, because you, when you travel, you know, you always wait and you always, you know, your bags are always full of boots and, you know, and presents. You have to be back for the family from overseas. So uh, space is a bit of a problem. So I mean, that's the easiest way of traveling and taking it with you. You don't have to take five or six different, you know, containers with you, but you just take 30 of those and, and 30 of the other and you've got your, you've got your nutrition sorted for the month's tour. Yeah, well, I guess that convenience factor which is so good. We've got some questions here that, uh, that I think some of our distributors and guests have asked. Should we ask Stefan some of these questions? Yeah. Yes. We might have to just check that these aren't X-rated, because you know. <laughs> I don't know if I can ask all these questions. I'm not going to... I know your name's written here, but I won't tell you who you are, unless it's really a silly question. Um, this question here, uh, what is your favorite GNLD product and why? Well, obviously all, you know... I've, had, I've benefited from all of them, but it's just in terms of taste, you know, we like good tasting things because we have to watch our diet. So the GR2 is, mm. is really good for me, the, the Nutri Shake, that's, those are the type of things that I enjoy and that I, and I like taking. I'm, I like taking all the products, but just the vanilla GR2 and the strawberry Nutri Shake. Okay, well, you've got, even got the names. A <laughs> little girl likes strawberry as well. <laughs> so we how, now how fast do you recover from injuries, and does, does this nutrition help you with your recovery? I think without a doubt. I mean, nowadays, a big emphasis is, is placed on recovery, especially after games. Even if you're not injured, you get <coughs> ice baths, that's the worst. In Durban, it's still all right, but you can imagine playing overseas where it's minus two degrees. After the game, you still have to get in an ice bath. Uh, it's not a lot of fun, but it certainly speaks of recovery. Nowadays, with the hectic schedule of rugby players, the amount of games they play on between 32, 36 games a year, I mean, that's more than a game every second weekend. That's, that's hectic. Recovery is so important. And certainly nutrition, sleep, rest, everything is, is, is very important. I would certainly say that uh, GNLD certainly speaks of that process, and that's very important. Yeah, it's important now. Stefan, are you married? <laughs> I, I, I like the ID number here. Double O, double O, seven. <laughs> oh, you, you, you thanks lost, thanks for you? asking, Rosie. I thought you were happily married. Yeah, no, I'm really happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, what products, okay, what products do you use with GNLD? You basically answered, did you take the both products when playing rugby? Yes, yes, I did. Uh, I did take all those products. I mean, also the, the full motion, the Omega, yeah. all of those, the Trend, what? all of those. And yes, I did use them while I played rugby, and I did get tested on all of them on numerous occasions. And you, know, you came through its flying colours. Not that I ever worried about that, but yeah. if I did get tested positive, you'd be the first person to get a phone. <laughs> 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 he likes chocolate, so I know he eats a lot of chocolate too. So, what? Why did you use? What did you? Well, why, what did you use before GNLD, and what differences did you experience? But I, mean, I don't know. You have to. Yeah, it's, it's just I really found that I had a lot of energy when I started taking GNLD products. I never got sick, and and when you play rugby, your immune system gets tested all the time because you, you you train hard, you work hard. Um, you travel a lot, there's a lot of different temperatures, a lot of bugs, whatever, <coughs> viruses in the air. Uh, I just felt that I was, you know, I was healthy all the time. I didn't get sick, and that's important, because, you know, you get sick, you're out for a week or two, some youngster comes in, takes your place, plays well, and before you know it, you, uh, you have to retire. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's, it's pretty frustrating, though, yeah. <laughs> It's important to, to try and stay on the field, and uh, I just felt that I always always had energy, and I never got sick. Well, that's, that actually leads into this next question, because I'm asking you, what typically did you eat in the day to keep your energy levels up, uh, with, from eating and a supplement point of view? Jeez, I mean, rugby players eat a lot, because you, you train a lot, you know, it's like that fancy car that Brozzy has actually parked in his garage. He <laughs> 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 a lot of money at GNLD, let me tell you. There's fancy cars in his garage. But it's, it is like that car, you know. It's a, you, you are like a, you, you are like a, like a car, and you have to put the best back into your body. What is the question? <laughs> 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 I, I would like to know, Stefan, just for everyone here, I mean, 
Were you still talking yeah. serious? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Why would I eat on a typical day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's only for your energy levels. Yeah, yes, no, I mean, rugby players eat a lot. I once did a talk for, a, <laughs> for, for the army, and uh, I made a list of what I eat during the day, and, the, you know, the commander couldn't believe what I put in my body in one day. He said that was enough to feed a whole platoon for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and then Stefan to blow a hole in the roof. Can you make that? <laughs> <laughs> you only eat five or six meals a day. I mean, smaller meals, but you have to refuel and, and eat all the time. It's, it's so important. Stefan, on a personal point of view, I mean, you had a long career. We've spoken about it. What can, what, can you give us some of the, your personal highlights as far as memories are concerned of, of particular games? Maybe your top three, or top, if it's a top five, of your, your personal memories that you take from your career. Uh, yeah, there, there, there are many, and often it's not the big games. People often think that the Curry Cup finals or the, the trophies you, you've won are the big games, that, and those are the ones that, that stand out. And it's often not those games, sometimes just, just small little games which is really instrumental and really turned the season around. Maybe you were on a losing streak for three or four games, and all of a sudden you won. You won an important game away from home, and then just start the season and turn it around. Those are often the games that you that you remember the best. Obviously, the first ones are are memorable ones. You know, the first ones for the Sharks, first ones for the Springboks, you know, even the first one for Bulland. I remember we still played in 1994. We were in Rustenburg, and I played against a guy. He must have been double my age. He had a beard for the old style line. <laughs> but he, he tackled, it's the hardest tackle I've ever had to to wear in my whole life. But you know, I remember. Those those type of games and uh, you know overseas the stadiums are a lot smaller but the people make a hell of a lot of noise for for twelve thousand people our games for Ulster we played against a team called Leicester one of the the best teams that England's ever produced they're always in the final you know the big names Martin Johnson they've all played there and uh, you know we played them on a Friday night it was actually early this year and there was twelve and a half thousand people in the stand they were all. Had a few drinks because they were in the pub since five o'clock. The game was only at seven, and that's why they watch rugby in the Northern Ireland because it's cold. You have to warm yourself up. But that's how, and, and we won forty-one-seven. But it's, it's not so much the result; it was just the atmosphere, the noise, and just the just the excitement and the. It's sort of a humbling experience because you know those people work hard from nine to five every day. They come to the stadium, they part with their heart and cash to come and have a bit of relief and come and have a bit of enjoyment and. And when you provide that enjoyment and that fun to the people, you know, just everyday people, not, not rich, not fancy, but just people that's passionate about rugby and passionate about sport, those are often the games that you remember. Mm -hmm. I think it's so true. I mean, even I play, I play also for Ulster, funny enough, where Stefan was. And just the way they're silent when the opposition are kicking. And I think it goes to another game. And I mean, often I think here in South Africa, we sometimes get it wrong because we boo at that time. And I sometimes think that's more motivation to the kicker to get it over. <laughs> Stefan, your, I mean, your family, <coughs> you've you, you got beautiful wife, Jackie, the kids, they all use GNLB product as well? Yes, they, they do. Yeah, I've got three kids. Whereas you've got one more than you, so just get busy. <laughs> always be one ahead of me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> got a spring captain, do they know all that stuff? <laughs> yes, they do. I mean, they, they use the Nutri Shakes of Vitality Squares, Vital Squares, and, uh, and uh, what's the other? Vital Squares and Vital Guard for the kids. Yeah, they love it. You know, they, don't, they didn't talk when they were three months old like yours. But, uh, <laughs> 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 uh, they, they, no, they enjoy it. They enjoy their products. And it's, uh, you know, if you, you know, just keep them healthy, they... People often comment on, on our kids that, they, that they're healthy and they, they never in hospital touch wood. Hopefully, yeah. that'll never happen. But uh, I think that GNLD has certainly got something to do with it. Yeah, that's good. Now, Stefan, I mean, you're always a quick mover. You're quicker than me on the rugby field. You got married before me. You had kids before me. Uh, now I see you. He's racing in rally cars and he's riding bicycles, like he says. What, what's the future for you, Stefan? Yeah, I think, as I said, I've just retired recently, so it's finding your feet in the real life, you know, now you've got, now you've got a boss, you've got a board, you have to report to all these things that just like, <laughs> right over your head. You know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think finding your feet in, in real life, I mean, rugby has been, has been good to me, I thoroughly enjoyed it, but, uh, you know, it's such a short period of your life, but now, for the rest of my life, I'll, uh, you know, rugby is behind you, and, you know, I've got a I've got to make and, and, and live now in the, in the real life. It's a, it's a big challenge, yeah. 
I mean, people forget that as you're a rugby player, you get almost get taken out of out of society and out of real life, and then you know when you retire, the rugby union just drop you straight back in, and you have to find your feet and find your way around. So uh, yeah, it's a big challenge, but uh, you know what rugby players are like. We're always up for a bit of a challenge, yeah. and uh, the competitiveness and the, and the and the will to compete is still there. So yes, as I said, I'm with the South African Rugby Legends at the moment. Uh, still involved with rugby, but also getting to learn a little bit about business along the way, and I'm, uh, I'm pretty much enjoying uh, spending time with the family on weekends. Well, I think, I think let's give Stefan to a big round of applause. I think he's, I mean, he's, he's a man who's always going to fall, fall on his two feet like a cat falling out the tree, and uh, he's never, not that he's ever fallen over. And uh, I think you've been a tremendous uh, asset, and uh, we're really proud to have you as a GNLD Sports Ambassador. I think give Stefan to Blanche another big round of applause. <laughs> we've, got a, we've got a whole lot of rugby balls and caps. I'm gonna get, if you can get your tickets ready, I'm going to draw a whole lot of these, and Stefan can sign them and we give them out. Um, I'm just going to call tickets out.